okay. With a quick glance at the door to check that Filch wasn't on his way back, Harry picked up the envelope and read, and it says, Quick Spell, a correspondence course in beginner's magic. Intrigued, Harry flicked the envelope open and pulled out the sheet of parchment paper inside. More curly silver writing on the front page said, Feel out of step with the world of modern magic. Find yourself making excuses not to perform simple spells. Ever been taunted for your woeful hand wand work? Here's the answer. Quick spell is an all new, fail safe, quick result, easy learn course. Hundreds of witches and wizards have benefited from the quick spell method. Madam Z. Nettles of Topsham writes, I have no memory for incantations and my potions were a family joke. Now, after the quick spell course, I am the center of attention at parties and friends beg me for their recipe, the recipe of my scintillation solution. Warlock D.I. Proud of Dinsbury says, My wife used to sneer at my feeble charms. But one month into your fabulous quick spell course, and I succeeded in turning her into a yak. Thank you, quick spell. It sounds like Mr. Filch is l trying to learn wizardry through the quick spell course. Fascinated, Harry thumbed through the rest of the envelope's co contents. Why on earth did Filch want a quick spell course? Did this mean he wasn't a proper wizard? Harry was just reading Lesson 1, Holding Your Wand, Some Useful Tips, when shuffling footsteps outside told him Filch was coming back. Stuffing the parchment back into the envelope, Harry threw it back onto the desk just as the door was opened. <coughs> Filch was looking triumphant. That vanishing cabinet was extremely valuable, he was saying gleefully to Mrs Norris. We'll have Peeves out this time, my sweet his eyes fell on Harry and then darted to the quick spell envelope, which Harry realized too late was lying two feet away from where it had started. Filch's pasty face went brick red. Harry braced himself for a tidal wave of fury. Filch hobbled over to the desk, snatched up the envelope and threw it in a drawer. Have you, did you read, he spurted. No, Harry lied quickly. Filch's knobbly hands were twisting together. If I thought you'd read my private, not that that's mine, for a friend, be that as it may, however. Harry was, start was staring at him, alarmed. Filch had never looked madder. His eyes were popping. A tick was going out one of his pouchy cheeks, and his scarton, and the scar tartan scarf didn't help the scarton tarf. The tartan scarf didn't help. Very well, go and don't breathe a word. Not that, however, if you didn't read, now go and I have to write up Peeves' report, just go. Amazed at his luck, Harry sped out of the office, up the corridor and the back stairs. To escape from Filch's office without punishment was probably some kind of school record. Harry, Harry, did it work? Nearly headless, Nick came gliding out of the classroom. Behind him, Harry could see the wreckage of a large black and gold cabinet that appeared to have been dropped from a great height. I persuaded Peeves to crash it right over Filch's office, said Nick eagerly. I thought it might distract him. Was that you, said Harry gratefully. Yeah, it worked. I didn't even get a tent detention. Thanks, Nick. They set off the corridor together. Nearly headless, Nick Harry had noticed was still holding St. Patrick's rejection letter. I wish there was something I could do for you about the headless hunt, Harry said. Nearly headless, Nick stopped in his tracks and Harry walked right through him. He wished he hadn't. It was like stepping through an icy shower. But there is something you could do for me. Harry, would I be asking too much? But no, you wouldn't want. What is it, said Harry. Well, this Halloween will be my 500th death day, said nearly headless Nick, drawing himself up and looking dignified. Oh, said Harry, not sure whether he should look sorry or happy about this. Right, I am holding a party down in one of the roomier dungeons. Friends will be coming from all over the country. It would be 
such an honour if you would attend. Mr Weasley and Miss Granger would be most welcome too, of course, but I dare say you'd rather go to the school feast. He watched Harry on tenderhooks. No, said Harry quickly. I'll come. My dear boy, Harry Potter at my death day party. And he hesitated, looking excited. Do you think you could possibly mention to Sir Patrick how very frightening and impressive you find me? Of course I could, said Harry, beaming, said Harry. Nearly, Nick, nearly headless Nick beamed at him. Later, we heard a death day party, said Hermione keenly, when Harry had changed changed at last and joined her and Ron in the common room. I bet there aren't many leaving people who can say they've been to one of those. It will be fascinating. Why would anyone want to celebrate the day they died, said Ron, who was halfway through his potions homework and grumpy. Sounds dead depressing to me. Rain was still lashing at the windows, which were now inky black, but inside all looked bright and cheerful. The firelight glowed over the countless squishy armchairs where people sat reading, talking, doing homework, or, in the case of Fred and George Weasley, trying to find out what would happen if you fed a filibuster firework to a salamander. Fred had rescued the brilliant orange fire-dwelling fire lizard from the care of a magical creature's class, and it was now smouldering gently on a table surrounded by a knot of curious people. Harry was at the point of telling Ron and Hermione about Filch and the quick spell course when the salamander suddenly whizzed into the air, emitted large sparks and bangs as it wheeled, whirled wildly around the room. The sight of Percy bellowing himself hoarse at Fred and George, the spectacular display of tangerine stars showering from the salamander's mouth and its escape into the fire with accompany explosions drove both Filch and the quick spell envelope from Harry's mind, and he forgot to tell them. By the time Halloween arrived, Harry was regretting his rash promise to go to the death day party. The rest of the school was happily anticipating their Halloween feast. The great hall had been decorated with the usual live bats. Hagrid's vast pumpkins had been carved into lanterns, large enough for three people to sit in, and there were rumours that Dumbledore had booked a troop of dancing skeletons for the entertainment. A promise is a promise, Hermione reminded Harry bossily. You said you would go to the death day party. So, at seven o'clock, Harry, Ron and Hermione walked straight past the doorway to the packed Great Hall, which was glittering inv invitingly with gold plates and candles and directed their steps instead towards the dungeons. <coughs> the passageway to Nick's party had been lined with candles too, though the effect was far from cheerful. These were long, thin, jet black tapers, all burning bright blue, casting a dim, ghostly flame over every, even over their own living faces. The temperature dropped with every step they took. As Harry shivered and drew his robes tightly around him, he heard what sounded like fingernails scraping across a blackboard. Is that supposed to be music? Ron whispered as they turned and saw Nick standing in the doorway, hung with black velvet drapes. My dear friends, he said. Welcome, welcome. So pleased you could come. He swept off his plumed hat and bowed them inside. It was an incredible sight, and we will find out more about that tomorrow. Good night.